Hi, I'm Vivo. And I am Sara. We are both singers and vocal coaches. It all started exactly two years ago at the EFTA conference at Marseille, the people 2012, two pyramids years. And we realize today that so much has happened since those days. Uh, as we both perform a quest for knowledge, and we are both convinced of the importance of interdisciplinary cooperation, we founded the Belgian National Voice Teachers Association, FWB. And I met Professor Felix de Jong in Leuven, where I teach, and he's very interested in working with singers, and especially with singing groups <coughs> like we. And we have a lot of questions out of practice, and therefore uh, we uh, joined forces and we started a lot uh, of uh, research, and uh, made us, this made us end up with even more questions. So today we present to you a pilot case study with one question that came up during our research. So the research issue, in class we give singers a lot of anatomic instructions like rising or lowering the soft palate, open or narrow the throat, open or close the nose, and we ask also various strong positions also related to powers. Also, a lot of kinesthetic instructions in vocal court, uh, coaching, like activity in the suprapharyngeal bridge, what's called passerance ball. We ask for more resonance. We ask for the tongue touching molars, or we ask a flat tongue, an open throat, air or no air to the nose, and it all depends concerning the singing style. Well, anatomic instructions is doing, and kinesthetic instructions is feeling. So in the end, we ended up with this research question. Do our anatomic intent and our kinesthetic sensation correspond to what we see on MRI images? This is the method we used. We worked together with some professional singers, male and female, they were trained in various singing styles and they were using various methods. For example, a classical singer working with a lot of auditive instructions. Also a classical singer working with a lot of anatomic and kinesthetic instructions. We also work with singers trained in complete vocal technique and still voice training. These two Latin methods both work with a lot of anatomic and kinesthetic instructions. We gave those singers specific and anatomic instructions while singing in an MRI scan. <laughs> right after the sounds, they described their kinesthetic sensation, and we decided to focus on Passavant's wall and the tongue. Why Passavant's wall? Well, to our knowledge, there is not much uh, literature up till now about uh, this closure mechanism. Excuse me, please, there is a very stupid question. What is the Passavant's wall? Here it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At your <service>. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Well, it's a, fractal, it's, it's a fractional structure, nasal pharyngeal and closing system. And you see, one is so the the small posterior, and two is the soft palate. And with an endoscopic viewer, you can see it even better. So, what do you see? The one is a passavance wall posterior, the four is the soft palate, and two and three passavance wall lateral. And in the second image, you can see how it can change. So, it can be closed completely. Today, we present to you five singers. Well, they're in the eyes, cameras, not the singers itself. We gave them a lot of instructions, but we decided for today that we present two slides per singer. So the first one is a female trained in classical singing auditive. What did you ask her? To sing maximal resonance C2 on A. Her kinesthetic sensation was, my soft palate is high and my tongue is high. And indeed, what we see, soft palate high, tongue high. Another 
instruction to the same person was light registration E2 on R. Her kinesthetic sensation was soft palate high, nose closed as normally with classical singers, and tongue low. And look what we see. Soft palate low, <laughs> nose closed, and tongue high posteriorly. The next thing I'm going to present to you is trained in complete vocal technique, so he works a lot with anatomic intent and kinesthetic sensations. We asked him to produce an E on F0 in neutral. We also asked him to position his soft palate high and close the nose. He actually felt that that was happening and that his tongue was quite high. Here you can see that is that's exactly what was happening. And might I add a very funky mushroom tongue position. <laughs> the other sound he made, amongst a lot of other sounds, was an E on overdrive on B3. We asked him to position his soft palate high and to open the nose. He felt that his soft palate was high and he felt no air passing through the nose. So he was wondering, is my nose closed? His tongue felt flat and low. What we see here is something completely different. You can see that the soft palate is very low, the nose is open, and the tongue is again in a high position. We'd like to share this interesting point with you. This illustrates our question 100%. After producing the latter sound, he said, I know in theory that my tongue must be high, but it feels low. The next singer was trained in distilled voice training, so also used to work with anatomic and kinesthetic instructions. She was singing an E on G5 in tilt. The soft palate should have been low, and we asked for an oral sound. That means that the nose is closed. She felt that those two things were happening and that the tongue was high. Here we can see that this corresponds 100% to the instruction. The other tongue she made was an E on G4 with thick vocal folds. We asked her to position the soft palate low and again to make an oral sound to a means of low strokes. She felt that that was happening and that the tongue was low. We, however, see here that something completely different is happening. The soft palate is quite high, the nose is open, and the tongue is high. We had a lot of female training classical singing, anatomic and kinesthetic. Her instruction was mixed voice, E2 on R. She felt a soft palate high, tongue tip low, tongue posteriorly high. And indeed, it is exact what we see. Another instruction was light registration, C2 on R. Kinesthetic sensation, soft palate, high. Tongue very high, posteriorly. Tongue low, at the tip. And look what we see. Soft palate low, and tongue completely low. The next singer was female and also trained in complete vocal technique. She produced an E on G5 in neutral. The soft palate should have been low and the nose should have been open. She felt that that was exactly what was happened and also her tongue felt high. What we see is that this is 100% corresponding. The last sound we are sharing with you is an E on B4 in neutral with a low soft palate and a closed nose. She felt the soft palate being low, tongue nose being closed, and the tongue felt low, except for the middle, that felt a bit higher. Here we see that the soft palate is not low at all, it is extremely high, the nose is closed, and the tongue is not only a little bit higher in the middle, but is high in front and in the middle. So, our findings. Anatomic intent and kinesthetic sensation versus what we see do not always correspond. 
we have a few remarks. A case study is not a generalization. We had a lot of images uh, to analyze, and we saw also sometimes blurry lines by vibration during the formation. So, <laughs> no conclusions, no answers, only questions. So now we have a few questions for ourselves and for you. Are anatomic and kinesthetic instructions advisable during teaching? Is it possible to train singers to connect their kinesthetic sensation to what actually is happening? And more importantly, you have more questions or remarks. Let's go for interdisciplinary cooperation. Thank you for your attention and for your input. <laughs>
high with closed nose and some kind of low. With both okay. in and out for yeah. things. Okay. Yes. Yes. So I'm guessing that's why you have problems with many singers. Yes, so yes. they touch it up. Yes, so it's very interesting to see that we can control that because they were bringing the fringe ball down. Yes, thank you. Very interesting. Uh, it is a very interesting study, and uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, you have shown that some persons uh, respond nicely to anatomical instructions and some to other kinds of instructions. And that is probably the classical observation in the singing studio, and suggesting that use the terminology and the instruction that is working. Uh, for, this, uh, for the individual, and uh, uh, then, then you know, according to use more factor-based uh, factors. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Because yeah. there's no time, just a short question. Short, okay. short question. Yes. Very, very short. Um, it'd be interesting because they're responding to a sound cue. It'd be interesting to see what the person giving the sound cue is doing and whether they actually yeah. are hiding it <laughs> and doing what that person is doing. Super so 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 But we also describe the sounds. Like now I'm going to do an overdrive on G2 with high soft palate and open nose. This is the sound. Can you do the same? So they were given the auditory example and the anatomic instruction. Next Supine question. position. Um, is there support? Uh, it, that was really difficult, yes. yes. Uh, did you tell them to support the sound or were they? Yes. 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 yes, 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 yes. And can you monitor for that next time you do the experiment? Well, it's really difficult to monitor whether they are supporting it in an MRI scan. How would you suggest we monitor that? Are there around their or something? Uh, is that no. possible? With the, no, no, no. The, no, 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 How many instructions did you uh, give out per subject? Did you only give two instructions no, per subject? No, a lot. Okay, so you just, you just pick the, the most extreme cases. Yes, yes, yes. And do you have any sort of statistics like this guy responded better to, to Yes, but we were not going to share them because it's not important to our question. I think it is. Well, for now, for our pilot case study, because we have so much more work to do. <laughs> yes. My question, you had a better coincidence the sensation and the of the time because of the time you have been recuperated related to the so the rate of light assessment on the same for the time? No, not with every singer. For some singers, the time was uh, more correct, but with a few singers, it was all the time. Tongue and 